in the basket, and he said, you know, you have to decide. Are you going to change something? He said, no, we're not going to change anything. We're just going to do what we do. Clemson wins the tip. Chase Hunter handling the point guard responsibilities for the Tigers. Going to have his hands full all evening long having to deal with Kihei Clark on the perimeter. Brevin Galloway attacking the basket, unable to finish. Strong defensive stand for Virginia in the first possession. And Galloway likes to drive the ball to the basket, and so Virginia, they did a nice job to prevent him from getting to all the way to the goal without helping. They're going to need to do that because Clemson's on a three-point tear as well. And, Dan, that's new for Galloway. We watched him a season ago at Boston College, and he was simply a three-point shooter. He's expanded his game this season. Oh, what a pass. Another one of the areas of concern for Virginia, missing chip shots, point-blank layups. This time it turns into an opportunity for Hunter Tyson, unable to finish on the three, but the offensive rebound for P.J. Hall. Boy, how often has Tony Bennett and his staff seen that in the last couple of Virginia games? That is an easy layup, and the Cavaliers just miss. How much of it do you feel is Virginia thinking about it at this point? I know Tony Bennett said he didn't want to talk to his teams about it to lose confidence as Ian Shefflin is unable to connect from three. But how much do you think it's in Virginia's mind? Well, I think it's in Virginia's mind. But that time, I think Franklin just expected to get more pressure. These Clemson guys were big, and he was trying to make sure he didn't get his shot blocked. T.A. Clark to Jane Gardner in his spot right along that baseline where he's normally automatic, unable to finish. But Van Vanderplas is coming up with the offensive rebound, a second chance opportunity for Virginia. Boy, Corey, uh, Vanderplas misses a wide open three. Franklin misses a layup. Gardner misses short on a shot that he makes 80% of the time. Now, that's the kind of thing that can get into your head if you're the Virginia Cavaliers. Well, one thing that Virginia has heard a lot of is they get the turnover. Reese Beekman getting out in transition. It's one thing they've heard a lot about is their shooting woes as of late. It continues with Armand Franklin unable to finish with the three in the corner, but another second chance opportunity for Virginia. Gardner looking for the foul there. And again, P.J. Hall inside is so big and so strong. Gardner is a wide body too, but Hall is every bit as wide and is strong and is athletic. P.J. Hall, one of the best athletes in the ACC, especially on the front court, Hunter Tyson missing off the top of the key. And right now, these two teams both struggling from the field. Clemson 0-4, Virginia 0-5 to start this game. Of course, we're scoreless. Already close to three minutes having been played. That's a nice job by Galloway. He's six foot three and a half. It's be hard for Clark to shoot over him. That's a tough shot. Again, you can say that's a missed layup, but that's a very, very tough shot. It is that Kihei Clark getting in amongst the trees, unable to finish the layup. And right now, the student section still standing, waiting for the first points of this game to be scored by either team. But, of course, they'll sit down when the Hoos get a bucket. Ian Shefflin getting to the free throw line. He'll have the opportunity for two. The foul on Ben Vanderplas in the painted area. And a chance for our first points of this game to happen at the free throw line. And Ryan Dunn at the scores table, ready to check in for Tony Bennett's Wahoo. Now, Shefflin is a guy, he's a 68% free throw shooter in conference play. But this is a guy, they don't run any plays for him, they don't really throw him the ball. But if he can score six or eight points, get six or eight rebounds, he's a very good passer. He can be a key to this Clemson team, and he has played very well during this hot stretch that they've, they're on. Well, he's done something no one else has been able to do in this game, which is score <laughs> points right now. So two points for Shefflin as he checks out. R.J. Godfrey stepping in for him. And Godfrey, they, they, they totally changed their look with Godfrey. He's much more athletic. Uh, Shefflin is a little bit more of a banger. Kihei Clark from three, unable to get it to go down. Looked a little bit like Kihei hesitated on that shot. Sure Wasn't did. sure if he should be taking it. Virginia 0 of 7 from the field to start the game.
Cavaliers, there's no question they're playing really well on the defensive end. Again, this is a Clemson team that has scored 90 points, 90 plus points, two games in a row, and three of their last four. Now that is not over and back. No, it is. You're not. allowed to throw the ball in the backcourt. He never possessed it in the front court. Not a popular decision here. However, it's the right play, and of course, the fans here will think that was the wrong decision, and it ends up with Brevin Galloway knocking down the three. And knocking down a three, Corey, under heavy pressure. That was not an open shot. Gardner won't hesitate. Still unable to get it to go right now. Virginia trailing 5-0. Think they got to drive the ball to the basket. I believe so. They have to get their guys. Kia Clark, Reese Beekman, getting downhill, and then they can play inside out, make plays for their teammates as well. A nice find from Hunter up top to Galloway. Gets the painted area, but denied by Ryan Dunn. And Dunn with the finish on the alley oop. The first wow. bucket for Virginia. And the foul happens in great fashion. And, Corey, that brings us to our first break of the game, and that gives us an opportunity to pause and remember. As soon as he checks in, comes up with a block shot and turns it into points on the other end of the floor. Corey, we're sitting here at half court, and we're right behind Kihei Clark, and he throws that pass, and the first thought in my mind is, what is he doing? Where's that ball going? And Ryan Dunn comes flying in. That was a very impressive play. And if that's going to be your first points, that's a pretty good way to get him. Some style points for Ryan Dunn, trying to complete the three-point play. He's able to do so. Not much scoring in the first five minutes of this game thus far. 5-3. Clemson leads Virginia, but Kihei Clark continues to put pressure on Chase Hunter. That's something, in my opinion, Dan, that he's going to have to do this entire game, not allow Chase Hunter to comfortably bring the basketball uh, I, I agree with you, Corey. Chase Hunter is actually a converted point guard, and he's played the position very well throughout the year, but this is a real challenge for him tonight. Brevin Galloway attacking Reese Beekman, unable to get it to go, but Goffrey with the offensive rebound attempt doesn't go. Virginia with numbers, trying to get out in transition. Interesting to see Virginia not playing a little faster with the scoring struggles, trying to get some easy baskets. And it's tough, going to be tough to do that against Clemson because they are not a team that rebounds the ball offensively. They like to get back. Nice find from Beekman to Armand Franklin, who's able to finish on the layup on the interior. And just like that, we've got a tie at five. Beautiful pass by Reese Beekman. To Clemson, they're not sending anybody to the board. And maybe one guy and the other four fall back. They do not want to give up any easy baskets. They're not a defense that's going to get a lot of steals. Similar defensive coaches styles between these two coaches. As Jaden Gardner attacks the basket, picks up the foul against P.J. Hall. Will be his first. This is a really nice job by Beekman to drive in and draw the defense. And nobody sees Franklin. And see, Franklin is playing out there. He's playing against a bigger guy. He's matched up against Hunter Tyson, and Tyson just lost him in that traffic trying to help out. One of the best things for a guard, especially a guy who shoots the basketball from beyond the arc, as Armand Franklin does, is to see a layup go in early. Absolutely. Get some points on the board, build some confidence for you moving forward. And it's, it's interesting. Hunter Tyson has four or five inches on Armand Franklin, but Tyson does not play offensively inside. So the Cavaliers, like everybody else does, can afford to guard him with a smaller guy. Virginia on a 7-0 run after getting behind 5-0. And after the pressure we saw Kihei Clark putting on Chase Hunter, Brad Brownell goes to, of course, Chase's younger brother <laughs> Dylan to, bring, to allow him to handle the basketball. I think he he might be a little bit more of a traditional point guard, but he doesn't shoot it anywhere well anywhere near as well as his brother. No, he does not, but he is that traditional point guard, but turns it over. Reese Beekman out on the break and the finish. That's what we're talking about, Corey, playing against a bigger guy who doesn't really play the way a guard does out on the perimeter. And you see Reese Beekman, of course, Virginia's best perimeter defender, taking on the challenge of guarding Hunter Tyson, although he gives up a couple of inches. Yeah. 
Chase Hunter off the mark from three, but the offensive rebound by P.J. Hall, who finishes with some authority. Well, that's Beekman and McNeely over there trying to block out P.J. Hall, and I can tell you that's a losing proposition. <laughs> You've seen that movie before, oh. I'm sure. P.J. Hall is so athletic and so strong. Dan, he's a gym, he was a gymnast as a young, a young person. He can kick his foot well above his head as we see Reese Beekman lining up the three, knocking it down, shooting close to 37% from beyond the three-point arc this season. Well, as a team in the last six games, the Cavaliers are shooting only 28% from beyond the arc, and that's after they shot 38% in their first 21 games. So you know Tony Bennett is relaxing a little bit, and also this crowd has relaxed a little bit. Well, hey, hey, well you think about Virginia right now, the last two games, those two losses coming in, both on the road at Boston College at North Carolina, you have to believe that the Hoos are happy to be back at JPJ in front of their friends and family and, of course, those who support the program. I figured you'd see Caffaro tonight against this big Clemson lineup. Clemson's physical. And, of course, when you think physical, you think Francisco Caffaro. He has to be one of the guys stepping in there. And, of course, Tony Bennett trusts him, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Another stop. For Virginia, another turnover. Reese Beekman getting out in transition, but Virginia will slow it down. Kia Clark recognizing nothing on the possession. Well, Beekman made that steal, but the guy who made the play was Dunn. Dunn's had an impact early in this game, Dan. A call that you don't see often. A three-second call on Virginia. One Caffro has to go up with, get a shot on the board. Absolutely. <laughs> but here's that steal we're talking about. Dunn creates some problems. Beekman capitalizes. The Cavaliers turning off defense into offense, and so they have the lead. Heels in the game, and Reese Beekman has converted a couple of baskets here. Kihei Clark, nice penetration. Beekman very confidently hitting that three-point shot. And Corey, the Cavaliers' confidence has started to roll. You see they're started 0 for 8 and have made their last four. Now, that's still only 33%, but it's a lot better than zero. It's much better than zero, and you consider the start of this game. It took Virginia close to four minutes to score their first field goal but now seem to have something working for them offensively. But again, you talked about it. It's being created by their defense. Once again, Kia Clark putting the pressure on Chase Hunter outside. Clemson having to start his defense much further out on the perimeter because of Virginia's defensive pressure. Hunter Tyson off the mark. Good pressure against that shot, and that's done flying out there again. This is an interesting lineup the Cavaliers have in the game. Well, when, I'm Cap not sure this, Neely. You're not sure they practice much with this one, but at this point, Tony Bennett trying to get anything going. Tane Murray getting into the game as well. Yeah, that was a bad pass. If he makes a good pass, I think Clark has a three-point shot. Was that a bad pass because of the recipient? No, but the pass to Kihei Clark was a bad pass because they threw it at his ankles. He throws it in his shooting pocket. Now the pass to Caffaro, he doesn't want to shoot the ball, but a nice, he made a nice pass to get rid of it. So a hockey assist for Kihei Absolutely. on that possession. Virginia now two for five from beyond the three-point arc. Brevin Galloway trying to split the trap. Hunter Tyson lines up another one, unable to get it to go. And Hunter Tyson's had a tough time getting it going offensively here to start this game then. Now he's hanging out around the three-point line. I think he needs to try to take the ball to the basket. Last season, Hunter Tyson started the game with three three-pointers against Virginia in this building in a game that Clemson won by double figures. So he's had success here, but not early. Ryan Dunn coming up with the offensive rebound, the putback. And so far, he's been the guy who's been a difference maker for Virginia. Absolutely. How about that, Corey? He has the ball right next to the basket. He throws the ball to the corner, and he gets it right back on an air ball. So Dunn's doing everything right. Welcome to basketball in 2023. <laughs> they give up layups for three-point attempts, but yet find a way to score the twos. Virginia with a 10-point lead. We could have caught you on grounds back in the 
mid 70s. Wow, we oh, our hair was all puffed out everywhere. We didn't wear hats. Ah, okay, okay. So that the hair couldn't, was couldn't, actually your hat. Couldn't get them on. <laughs> I think Brad Brown now is really upset with his guys the way they're executing on offense. They're just not moving and moving the ball. PJ Hall lines up a three. Banks it in, and we've seen that from P.J. before and also seen the shrug afterwards. But you're talking about a young man who is 10 of 20 on his last three-pointers now, 11 for 21, as he's shooting the basketball extremely well as of late. Isaac McNeely off the mark. That was a basket Clemson desperately needed. Just as Virginia's first couple of baskets settled him down, let's see if that settles the Tigers down a little bit on offense. Inside to P.J. Hall, of course, going up against the very physical Francisco Caffaro, who picks up the foul. That's a, that's a hard matchup for Caffaro because P.J. Hall can match his strength. And as you pointed out, Corey, Caffaro can't match P.J. Hall's athleticism. No, there are very few bigs in the ACC in college basketball that can match P.J. Hall's athleticism. Tony Bennett recognizing that going to... Bennett Vanderplas, Jaden Gardner back in the lineup, but a big hand for Ryan Dunn and Caffaro as they've led the charge. And Virginia taking this lead. Nice hands by Bennett Vanderplas. McNeely on the break, goes to the Euro to finish. <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to do there, Corey, but that was some move. Tyson was lining him up and never got a chance to try to block him. P.J. Hall taking on Bennett Vanderplas, attacking them once again, showing off his athleticism in the finish. Then P.J. Hall comes into this game shooting 65% from the field over his last eight games. He's playing great basketball. And he just apologized to the referee for yelling at him, so he's polite as well. Yes. <laughs> of course you would recognize that as the gentleman that you are. And also he didn't want the ref mad at him, so... But the Cavaliers, again, they have played very well on defense, and Beetle just not being strong enough with the ball. Look at this. I don't know. Is that, can that be a Euro step? That looked like a Scandinavian step oh. or something. Oh, that you're was, going to go specifically to yeah, Scandinavia. That, that, was, that was really different. <laughs> of course, Scandinavia is part of Europe, so it all applies. <laughs> I, I, I'll, let, I'll refer to you on the geography with that one. This is a tough matchup for Vanderplas. But you see the trap coming immediately with P.J. Hall catching it. Will leave an open opportunity for Hunter Tyson, who still is unable to get it to go from beyond the arc. Hunter Tyson now 0 for 4 in this game and 0 for 5, oh, excuse me, 0 for 5 from beyond the 3-point arc. The Cavaliers dodged a bullet there because Tyson will make many more of those than he'll miss. Third turnover for Virginia. One of the things you've seen from Brad Brownell is Hunter Tyson lines up another and gets a friendly bounce here in the confines of JPJ to knock down his first three. Just a matter of time. It's really hard to leave him. And the way Cavaliers play defense, you leave somebody and you react back to them. But if Hunter Tyson gets that much time on a three, he's going to make most of them. Well, you know, I can appreciate the fact that he's over five and still lines it up confidently. Is Tane Murray unable to finish? This is another layup. For Virginia. But the Hoos holding a four point lead, 720 remaining here in the first half. Look at those numbers 56% from the field, 37 rebounds a game, the assist turnover ratio off the charts. Now, they haven't done that today. They've got four turnovers in this game, and Virginia, they're all steals, which means the Cavaliers have gotten a chance to get out and run, which is why. The Cavaliers at this point are credited with a 7 to nothing advantage in fast break points. How often do you see that on a Virginia stat sheet? Well, you know, Virginia actually held North Carolina scoreless on fast break points on Saturday, which doesn't happen often. But one of the things Virginia's done great, a great job of in this game is turning defense into offense where their offense was struggling. They got some easy ones getting out in transition but continue to play stingy defense against Chase Hunter and again Reese Beekman getting the job done. It's been steals early. Now it's a block. That's the same thing as the steal, Corey. You tip the ball to one of your teammates, you get a chance to go. Nice job by Clemson getting back on defense. A 
Amon Franklin attacking the basket, is able to get there, finishing with the left hand. And Franklin has been much more aggressive getting downhill, attacking the basket as of late, not relying as much on the threes now. Well, you do that, you create openings for yourself shooting threes. That was a nice find from Chase Hunter cross court to Josh Beadle, who's unable to knock it down. And Clemson struggling from beyond the three-point arc. We talked about how great they've been shooting coming in, but that has not been the case here tonight. Yeah, but in conference play, Beadle's only a 21% three-point shooter. And Vanderplas just doesn't look like he's shooting the ball with a lot of confidence to me, Corey. Well, but Vanderplas is playing banged up. Of course, you know, he's close to my age, which means that he's been <laughs> playing college basketball for a long time. <laughs> but Ben Vanderplas is playing back, being banged up a little bit. You know, Virginia started 0 of 8, now made 8 of their last 12, and getting good looks on the offensive end of the floor. That's one of Reese Beekman, in my opinion, needs to look at taking after already knocking down 1-3 in this game. Possession turns out in a turnover and an opportunity, a three-point play for Chase Hunter, who comes up with the steal and turns it into a bucket on the other end of the floor. The ACC Women's Basketball Tournament begins tomorrow at Greensboro Coliseum with every matchup but the championship game right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Our first round coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern with the Nothing But Net crew. Of course, hanging out with my god, Dan Bonner, who actually coached in the ACC tournament, the Virginia women's many well, years when ago. I, when I coached the Virginia women, we didn't have an ACC for women. Really? That's correct. We played a state tournament against other schools from Virginia. There was no women's ACC. Wow. Well, you know, I'm not going to uh, date you on that one. I'm not going to even mention the fact that you have been doing this for 43 years <laughs> on television. So <laughs> we'll let that go. Kevin Galloway attacking once again. Another block shot from Reese Beekman, this time unable to keep it in bounds, but still denying an opportunity defensively. Corey, the Virginia defense has been intense tonight. It's extremely impressive. Clemson has had to battle for everything they've gotten. Dan, when you look at this Virginia defense, it's not as good as the Virginia defenses have been traditionally, but their offense has covered up those deficiencies the majority of the year. Shot clock down to five seconds. Chase Hunter's had to deal with Kihei Clark all evening long. Kihei with a great defensive play, but Ian Shefflin coming up with the loose ball in the second chance. And that's what Shefflin does. He just hangs around, uh, and, and he gets loose balls. He gets offensive rebounds. That was a great defensive stand by Virginia. Bad luck there, but Clemson keeps battling. Chase Hunter getting in, getting his hands on the basketball. And that will go to Clemson. Well, that's really good help by the Clemson Tigers. It was not a very good pass to Gardner. Kihei Clark threw that one into traffic. Coaches always tell you, don't throw the ball into trouble. And Kihei threw it into trouble there. And they ended up losing the ball. So the Cavaliers with another turnover. They have forced turnovers, Corey, but they have committed them as well. Yeah, five turnovers for Virginia, who only averaged a little under eight. This, uh, excuse me, a little under nine. As P.A. Clark picks up the steal and attacks the basket. Wow. But a great block getting back by Ben Middlebrooks, not allowing that to happen. Cavaliers, one of the best in the country at not turning the ball over. And again, that's a funny-looking pass by Kihei Clark. And Alex Hemingway getting on the floor after it. But Brevin Galloway turns it right back over. Great hustle by Armand Franklin, not allowing the easy attempt for Hunter, Frank, Hunter Tyson. Cavalier defense bails him out again. It's not often you see a Virginia team have a couple of possessions in a row with such poor passing. Virginia with five turnovers in the last five minutes. Uncharacteristic for the Hoos, especially here on their home court. Franklin for three. In the corner is good. Virginia extending the lead to five. And Galloway was right there. That was not bad defense by Galloway. Nice job by Middlebrooks to force the pass out. 
And that's just one. If Franklin's going to make that, Clemson's going to have a problem. But we mentioned earlier, Franklin getting a layup, seeing the ball go through, it opens up things for you on the perimeter. Chase Hunter trying to get by Kihei Clark. Once again, great hands by Kihei Clark. And Hunter did everything he needed to do to get to the rim, just unable to get the shot up. Too much dribbling. His teammates are standing around watching him dribble. Move the ball. Move yourself. You know, if you're going to try to play one-on-one -on -one out there with Kihei Clark, that's a bad idea. That is not going to be a battle. You're going to win often, but Jaden Gardner off the mark, unable to finish and add any more cushion to this lead for Virginia. Clemson with an opportunity here offensively, doing it without P.J. Hall, the nice find from Middlebrooks to Tyson, who's able to score the layup under the basket. Nice give-and-go action, the oldest play in the game of basketball. And there, there's Tyson using, he doesn't have quite the size advantage against Dunn. But he got inside. I don't think Hemingway can go on. <laughs> Kihei Clark attacking the basket. The foul. Unable to finish it off. But a Kihei Clark being aggressive. Virginia holding on to a three-point lead. The Clemson Tigers not going away here to JPJ. So they don't Who's wait for the so okay. across from us, the section across from us, they sit down. Okay. That's those are students and friends and family, but the Who crew, the band, they do not sit down, even though I look up and now they're standing up. They sit down during timeouts. Well, See? I th I think that's they need to be more committed than that. Well, they text, they emailed me and said they never sit down. So, <laughs> again. <laughs> Just how much influence do you have around here if the people on the, the Who crew are emailing you? <laughs> <laughs> Had an opportunity to do ACC PM here in the building earlier today. Mark Packer, Taylor Tannenbaum. Visiting JPJ. First time Mark Packer's ever been in JPJ. Really? Yeah. really? JPJ's been here a while. He's been here a while. Bunch of great guests on the show earlier today as PJ Hall gets in there. And I'm not speaking of myself. I am talking, of course, Carla Williams, Ralph Sampson, and of course the great John Grisham. I saw Grisham. John Grisham up there. John Grisham, yeah. I mean, Jason Williford actually was on early, associate head coach for the University of Virginia. Ryan Dunn, who's off to a great start in this game. Three of three from the field. Eight points to lead Virginia in scoring early. Attacking the basket as P.J. Hall picks up his second foul. Well, Hall is athletic, but I don't know that he can stay with Dunn if Dunn's going to try to drive by him out on the perimeter. Yeah, very few guys who can defend Ryan Dunn, especially when you talk about his athleticism. And a different matchup here because Brad Brownell going with Hall guarding Dunn. And Tyson on Ben Evanipas, who gets to the basket and gets the and one opportunity, posting up Brevin Galloway. And you know, that's not something that Vanderplas does a lot of. He's not really comfortable with that post up game, but he's got a tremendous size advantage against Galloway, and there's nothing Galloway can do. That's a nice move. Now, of course, Vanderplas really struggles from the line. But when you have a mustache like that, does it really matter how well you shoot? Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> okay, I was just checking. Now, now that you talk about how people looked in the 70s, that's a 70s look right there. But remember, I did mention we're close in age. <laughs> a nice find from Galloway to Hunter Tyson, the easy bucket. Virginia scrambling defensively, trying to take away the passing lane. And they just got spread out. And when Vanderplas got knocked off balance, the Cavaliers had no way to cover everybody. And if you can leave somebody alone, though, I wouldn't leave Hunter Tyson alone. No, he's not the guy to leave alone. Playing great basketball as Kihei Clark lines up a three, unable to knock it oh, down. Oh, what a play! What a play! And the Clemson bench wants that. Off of Dunn while he was out of bounds. No, Dunn, Dunn left the court in bounds. This is an air ball. And Dunn is going to go up. He's in bounds. And the ball is out of bounds when it touches something out of bounds. Now, yes, it did bounce off P.J. Hall and hit Dunn. But P.J. Hall was already out of bounds. And by rule, it's out of bounds when it touches the first thing out of bounds. And since it's P.J. Hall, it's Virginia ball. Only 12 seconds left on the shot clock. That's why I like hanging out with you. See, you break down the stuff that I really don't know the rules <laughs> on. I just make it up. Attacking the basket. Armand Franklin unable to finish. Franklin getting involved in the mix. 
And that's going to stay with Virginia. Alex Hemingway out of bounds. And right now, Hunter Tyson getting his team together, allowing them to know they need to stop right now. Brad Brownell and Tony Bennett will have an opportunity to talk to their teams here during the timeout. And when you think about Hunter Couture missing a chunk of the middle of this season, that really derailed the Hokies midway through. Now we talked about Clemson and how hot they were, where their season low in points in the first half is 23, and they'd had that in the Boston College game that they lost. So the Cavalier defense has been outstanding here in the first half against a hot team. There's a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Amon Franklin, 4-3, gets a great look at it, unable to finish. Hunter Tyson with the rebound, four Plenty seconds remaining. Tyson gets up a good look, but unable to finish it. Virginia 15-1 when leading at the half. And Clemson has won seven games this season, Dan, when trailing at the half, so <laughs> stick around. They've been able to get out and go. That has really helped them. They have a 7-2 advantage in fast break points as McNeely scores here. And, of course, we've got a five-point game. Virginia shooting 35.7% from the field, and they're shooting the best percentage right now. Clemson at just over 32. But this Clemson team has seven comeback wins after trailing at halftime. So far from over here as we start the second half. Looked like an offensive rebound opportunity there for Gardner, unable to corral it. And Clemson with the opportunity here to make it a one possession game. Now Virginia doesn't want to have another scoring drought. They went almost five minutes without scoring in the first half. They don't want to start the second half the same way. P.J. Hall backing down Ben Vanderplas and is able to finish through the contact. Well, how about that, Corey? He lost the ball on the way up, but he's still able to control it and guide it into the basket. And then one thing, you've done a lot of Clemson games. You know that P.J. Hall had off-season surgeries, two, actually two off-season surgeries. He's just now getting his legs underneath him, becoming the player that we saw, from, saw him as last year. Well, there's no question about that. And that's one of the things that at this time of the year, we're talking about your net and your quad ones and quad fours and all that kind of stuff. And Clemson had two bad losses. They lost to South Carolina and they lost to Loyola Chicago. And in both of those games, P.J. Hall wasn't healthy. And so P.J. Hall healthy. This is a much different Clemson team. Now, of course, they lost to Louisville the other night, but they didn't score and Louisville made a lot of shots. Here's what we're talking about. And they've got four quad one wins, but the metrics, the, the analytics, the net doesn't like them. And you see Joe Lenardi has them as the first four out. And they're number 72 overall. And remember, 68 teams go, so they're close. According to Joe, that is. And, and Dan, I, I look at that, and of course, as we get down to under five seconds on the shot clock, Virginia is one of the best in the country. Vanderpoel's coming up with the offensive rebound, the putback, second chance points. Once again, not something that he's known for, but uncharacteristically coming up with the offensive rebound, the putback. Well, dominating a much smaller player, Chase Hunter, six foot three, and Vanderplas just used his size and strength to go right around him. P.J. Hall once again faking the handoff, attacking the basket, unable to finish. That time, Vanderplas standing his ground defensively. And he got some help. Beekman came over and I think really bothered them. We go back to your conversation regarding Clemson. Kentucky has that same bad loss against South Carolina, but it doesn't seem to be held against them the same way as being held against the Tigers. Well, if you can understand that thing, you explain it to me. I, I, <laughs> oh, no, I certainly don't. <laughs> you have been my go-to on in everything NCAA tournament for 30 years now, my friend. <laughs> That's the first basket of the game for Jaden Gardner. And for Virginia to be ahead by seven, with that being the first basket of the game, for the guy who's carried him, basically, is really a positive sign for the Cavaliers. Absolutely. Gardner coming off a double-double, 19 points, 12 rebounds at North Carolina on Saturday. And as you mentioned, he's been their guy offensively for the last few years as P.J. Hall has been the guy offensively to start the second half for Clemson. Boy, that, that is some play again by P.J. Hall. But the guy who made that play was Chase Hunter. He stopped trying to dribble the ball one-on-one -on -one against Kihei Clark. He's driving the ball and passing it.
some heavy English wow. on that one from Jaden Gardner. And of course, the flex afterwards just showing off the guns a little bit. But check out the English on this one, then. Wow, this is a play where this is just the strength of Gardner. I don't know how he got that in the basket because it's strength against strength. And that's P.J. Hall's third personal foul. And maybe that's the best way for the Cavaliers to handle him. Get him on the bench. Yeah, that's the only way they've been able to handle P.J. Hall. And most teams have been able to handle P.J. Hall as of late. But Jaden Gardner, who started the game 0-4, has now made his last two field goal attempts, but unable to finish at the free throw line. And that wasn't a confident free throw. He was no, chasing boy. as soon as he left his hands. You know, sometimes I think, Corey, guys don't shoot free throws well because they don't want to go to the free throw line. I think a good free throw shooter has to want to go to the line. Did you ever go through that as a player? Yeah, absolutely. Not me. Anytime to score, give it to me. I'll take it. Free throw line, shots, bad shots, no matter what. I'll take it. <laughs> Hunter Tyson on the drive, gets to the mid-range, pulls up. Unable to finish, but great job defensively by Armand Franklin, not allowing him to get to the paint. Stayed in front of him, but again, Hunter Tyson isn't looking to drive the ball to the basket. He wants to shoot that pull-up jump shot. But that's really good defense by Franklin. Let's see if P uh, Tyson can guard Franklin. That pocket pass to Gardner, and we've seen him miss a couple of those. That's normally money in the bank for Jaden Gardner, but unable to finish on that possession. Now Franklin, I think, has had some difficulty on the offensive end shooting over Hunter Tyson, so that's a pretty good matchup between those two. Yeah, great matchup between those two. Hunter Tyson, of course, a guy that's an ACC Player of the Year candidate as well as a first team, whereas Reese Beekman comes up with another steal. And the fell hole, a great block by Chase Hunter getting back, not allowing Reese Beekman to have the dunk. Well, that's one where maybe Beekman needs to take it underneath to avoid that because Hunter can really get up. Hunter for the three on the other end, unable to finish it, but that's one where you get the right to come down and take any <laughs> shot you want after that defensive play well, by Chase now maybe Hunter. Maybe you think that. Now Brad Brownell <laughs> might disagree with you, but that Chase Hunter has, uh, you know, he's really struggled offensively, and he's got an open shot. There's no reason for him not to take it. Vanderplas once again backing down, goes to the fadeaway, unable to finish. Gardner getting involved with the offensive rebound, and his effort forces Hunter Tyson to lose that off of his leg. How about this block, Corey? You think you have a dunk, you're going against another guard. I mean, he threw the ball right to him, and Bigman figures he's got a dunk, but what a great job. Uh-uh. Right now, playing to try to get one of those top four seeds in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you'd like to get a double bye when you're in a situation like Virginia in the ACC tournament. You don't need to play extra games to build up your resume. Their resume's fine. Now, this recent tough streak they've had have knocked them down to the fourth number four seed. They had been up on the two line there, according to our Joe Lenardi. So they'd like to get things back in gear here. Now, of course, much respect to Joey Brackets. But I've been talking to you. You've been informing me about the NCAA tournament for the last 14 years that I've been in TV. We used to have our conversations at the ACC tournament when you would tell me how things work. So now tell me how this works with Clemson. They're 13 and 5 right now in the ACC, which of course people are dragging through the mud, but it's still a very good conference this season. This Clemson team right now not in the field, according to Joey Brackets. What do they need to do moving forward? They just need to win games, Corey. It's, it's very simple. They have put themselves in a position where they can be considered, uh, and if they, ju they just need to win games. This is an important game for them today, but I think that they, they have to win out in the regular season and win a couple of games in the ACC tournament. And there are other teams playing in other tournaments. You just don't know how the results are going to go, so you just keep playing and try to win as many games as you can. Well, for those of you out there listening, both Clemson and Virginia oh. fans, as Gardner's unable to finish, but there goes Poppy. Francisco Caffaro coming up with the offensive rebound and the second chance opportunity at the free throw line. But I was mentioning, people out there, Clemson, Virginia fans, and Southern, they should pay to listen, sit down and listen to Dan Bonner break down <laughs> how things work with the NCAA tournament. You have called the NCAA tournament for how long now? Uh, this is the one coming up with my 37th. 37th year now. Let me just remind that you. Was that was well before the science of bracketology, <laughs> though. <laughs> you know, we didn't have this stuff going on <laughs> 37 years ago. Well, if you really want to know how the NCAA tournament works, hang out with Dan Bonner for a while. You will feel 
much smarter because of it. Now, I don't know that hanging out with me makes anybody feel smarter, but what I will tell you, I can tell you for certain, right now, nobody is in the NCAA tournament. You know, we talk about who's in and who's out. Well, nobody's in right at the moment. Now, there are some teams that are out uh, because teams have already lost in conference tournaments. Some teams did not qualify for their conference tournament. There's a few teams that are still uh, they're in that transition period. So there are some teams that are out, but I can guarantee you that at this point, nobody is in. Because they have the opportunity to play in their conference tournaments and win that automatic qualifier, you say very few teams are out as well. Well, if you still if you still have a chance to play in your conference tournament, you're not out because no matter how strange it can be, there's a big three by Franklin. Who expected Virginia Tech to win the ACC tournament last year? I don't believe anyone expected it going in except for Mike Young and his Mike, squad, Mike but Young they were able to get it done. And representing the ACC in the NCAA tournament as the automatic qualifier a year ago. And, of course, next week we will see all 15 ACC teams getting involved in Greensboro to try to make that happen as the pass from Middlebrook to Alex Hemingway a little bit high. And now the eighth turnover for Clemson. And Clemson, I mean, Corey, they've only scored four points in the second half, and we've played seven minutes. And that is a really nice-looking shot by Franklin. You saw that Hunter Tyson was there, but not close enough. I mean, Tyson, with his height advantage, it's hard for Franklin to shoot over him. So nice job by Franklin to create some space to get that shot off. And we both know how important it is for Franklin to get and make quality shots for Virginia. He's their leading scorer on the season as Franklin gets to the free throw line. The mid-range pull-up is good. And Brad Brownell calls timeout because he knows that Armand Franklin is a guy who can get hot. is that there are no elite teams. I personally feel that when Virginia's making shots, they can absolutely be elite. Corey, there's no question about that. These guys, I mean, this is a Clemson team coming in here that's scored more than 90 points two games in a row. They're on pace to score 40, and Armand Franklin has started to heat up for the Cavaliers. The way Virginia plays defense will keep them in any game they play. If they make shots, they can beat anybody. If they don't make shots, well, the other team, anybody can beat them. But this Tony Bennett team has a chance to be an elite team. And, Corey, I'll tell you something. I think that Duke is coming on. You know, they were not a very offensively explosive team early in the year. I think they're becoming more explosive offensively. You know, NC State, they got whacked by Clemson the other day. But that is a dangerous team. And, you know, Miami has a really good team. I mean, look at the guys Miami has. There are four guys on that Miami team that might make one of the all-ACC teams. They can put points on the board. That lost to Florida State is a head scratcher, but I think there are teams in the ACC that if they get in the NCAA tournament, depending on matchups, they can go away. And I believe that that's the point that you know I've really been trying to make regarding the ACC with so many different styles of play. As PJ Hall goes to the jump hook and is able to finish the first points in the last four and a half minutes for Clemson, but with so many different styles, coaching styles, way of play for these ACC teams. It prepares you for the NCAA tournament. So when you get to the NCAA tournament, most teams haven't seen all the different styles that the ACC teams see, which is part of the reason why you have so much success. Three ACC teams in the Elite Eight a season ago. And, and Corey, the, the teams are better than the metrics say they are. Yes, the teams at the bottom of the ACC have struggled this year, but the teams at the top of the ACC, I think, can compete with anybody in the country. Josh Beadle to the basket, the nice finish with the left hand off the glass. Beadle hasn't been a big time scorer for the Tigers, but a timely basket there. And a little bit of nervousness here on the part of the Virginia fans. The, you know, Clemson, as you mentioned before, they have uh, made a specialty of making comebacks. Isaac Neely lining oh. up the three, knocking it down, keeping the Tigers at bay. A big basket, as you mentioned, the crowd here is starting to get a little nervous with Clemson scoring on the last two possessions. That was a strong answer from the first year. Well, what a nice job dribbling away from the defense into that shot. Lots of times when a guy relocates, it's hard for him to make the shot on McNeely. Now Tyson going to work in the painted area, going against a strong defender, and Ryan Dunn, they're still able to get the bucket. 
Uh, and again, Hunter Tyson doesn't do a lot of that, but when he does, he can be pretty good. And he doesn't really have much of a size advantage against Dunn. McNeely lines up another three, knocks it down. That actually will be a two-pointer. Doug Sermon saying his foot was on the line, and he did that with a catch and shoot. No dribble there. That's some versatility. Alex Hemingway trying to return the favor, knocks down a three on the wing off of the dribble penetration by Hunter Tyson. Tyson trying to fire up his team. He mostly right now is quieting the Virginia crowd. Well, they made their last four. I mean, they were really struggling to shoot the ball, shooting only 30%, but four in a row, that'll get everybody's attention. And here's an offensive foul against Caffero. Virginia holding on to a 10-point lead, 9.53. We're here back at JPJ. Dan, we've had a bit of an offensive explosion here in the second half. <laughs> well, compared to the first half, each of the teams, Corey, shooting 50%. Clemson 6 to 12, Virginia 7 for 14. The Cavaliers have knocked down two threes as well. Now, Brad Brownell, guys, we they, they can put points on the board, so the Cavaliers, they've got to continue to score. It's hard to hold this Clemson team down for the entire game. Hunter Tyson continues to encourage his team. You're talking about a fifth year, all-time leader in games played for the Clemson Tigers as Clemson goes inside to P.J. Hall, who's unable to finish. Got a good look, just unable to get it to go. Ben Vanderplas standing his ground. You're right. It was close, Corey, but it was very well contested by Vanderplas. Nice find from Kihei Clark to Isaac McNeely. The finish, the foul opportunity for the and one. A dime by Kihei on great cut by McNeely. And again, I thought, where the heck is he throwing that ball? Really nice job by McNeely. I mean, McNeely's not even in the picture. And Kihei Clark finds him. And the other thing, Kihei Clark has done a nice job passing the ball. He, you know, was a little loose with the ball early a couple of times. He's now got four assists. But he has been matched up against Chase Hunter. And Hunter has only scored two points, has only made one field goal. Yeah, and that's, of course, you know, God is coming into averaging over 14 points per game. So one of the main cogs in the offense for Clemson is Tyson is able to line up a three and knock it down. And as you mentioned, Dan, Clemson's starting to find something offensively. 12 points now for Hunter Tyson. Well, Ty again, Tyson is a guy you've mentioned a couple times. He's certainly a candidate for ACC Player of the Year. I think he blocked the shot that time. It looked like Beetle might have got away with one on that as Chase Hunter attacks the basket and is able to finish. Rarely do you see anyone beating Virginia coast to coast and getting a layup. Well, they got a layup because they got the blocked shot and they kept it alive, and that can be the same thing as a turnover. And so here Clemson, and here they come. Good look for Kihei Clark, wide open, lines up the three, unable to knock it down, but the offensive rebound and put back from Jaden Gardner. But the passing by Virginia made Clemson scramble, so the guy inside trying to block out Gardner was Chase Hunter, and that's just a mismatch. And then one of the things that we've seen from Virginia, of course, Tony Bennett played a lot of their three-man triangle offense throughout the last stretch, but they're going a little bit back to what they call sides now, the mover blocker action running in those, dropping those pocket passes as well. P.J. Hall back to the basket. The jump hook is good. And as you mentioned before, that's a tough matchup for Bennett Vanderplas to be able to guard P.J. Hall down low. Clemson, after that scoring drought, now made seven of their last eight field goal attempts. P.J. Hall does such a great, does a great job getting the ball very close to the basket. And he shoots it quickly, so you don't have time to double team him. And he doesn't have to take two or three dribbles to get in position. E.A. Clark finding Gardner in his patented mid-range spot. This time, Jaden Gardner able to knock it down. And it's really beginning to hurt the Clemson defense that they can't stay in front of Kihei Clark. Galloway's been very quiet, too.
Well, we talked about Jaden Gardner. He didn't score in the first half, but he has been one of the offensive cogs here in the second. The put back and then the jump shot. The Cavaliers keep the lead. A hot 28-point victory against NC State on Saturday. So playing very good basketball, he and Chase Hunter combined. But the job defensively that Kia Clark and Reese Beekman have done on these guards has been spectacular here on their home floor. Well, this, this is an elite defensive team, particularly elite defensively in the backcourt. P.J. Hall with another opportunity. And Virginia will bring the trap on this possession. Ends up as a turnover. On and that inbounds pass, Corey, he caught the ball much further away from the basket than he wanted to. And when he has to move toward the basket and dribble the ball, that gives the Cavaliers a chance to trap and force a turnover. And then whenever... Clemson has been in trouble throughout this game. They've gone to P.J. Hall coming out of the timeout. Tony Bennett drawing up the trap and making sure they got the basketball out of his hands. Reese Beekman with the mid-range pull-up. For Virginia fans, it's great to see Reese Beekman being more aggressive on the offensive end. Virginia needs offense from Kihei Clark and from Reese Beekman. And that's an awful lot to ask because you're asking those guys to do so much on the defensive end. But this Cavalier team, I think, to be successful in postseason play, has to get offense from Beekman and Clark. Josh Beadle attacking the basket. A little bit of a push off there with the right hand. However, the bucket is good. Josh Beadle, a strong second half here for the Tigers. Well, Beadle's one of those guys that's sort of a fast twitch. He's got a little bit of wiggle to him. And when he puts the ball down, he's going to the basket. Not a great outside shooter. I like the wiggle, though. I'm a fan of you saying wiggle. <laughs> I can see you and Wally Walker getting the wiggle on back in the day. Is that the way it went out? No, no. There was no wiggle on that team. <laughs> Reese Beekman to Jaden Gardner. Once again, Gardner in his spot. Now 12 points all here in the second half for Jaden Gardner. That's a foul on Vander Plotness. You might get away with that down inside, but not out there in front of God and everybody. <laughs> the Nothing But Net crew will be at Greensboro Coliseum again this year for the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament with pre- and post-game shows for every game. Plus, ACC PM will be there again tomorrow. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. That's a little bit of frustration by Chase Hunter. He drove into the lane, Corey, but, I mean, he got met by five guys. Well, Chase Hunter, of course, when you finally get past Kia Clark or Reese Beekman, <laughs> and then you've got resistance at the rim, he's not the first guard to be frustrated here at JPJ. Well, he took his life in his hands there. He's trying to take the ball from Gardner. He picked up the foul. Lucky he didn't get a broken nose. Beekman to Kihei Clark, unable to corral that one, but gets it back. Jaden Gardner once again in the mid-range, unable to get it to go down, but Bennett Van der Plaas on the offensive rebound and an opportunity for two at the free throw line. It's been a strong second half for Van der Plaas as well. well and again, Corey, what you see, the ball movement and player movement by Virginia, when that shot goes up, Van der Plaas is battling against Chase Hunter on the inside. Two on for Virginia. And Virginia doing a great job on the offensive boards. They have 11 of them today. Their season high is 12. Reminder to fans to download the ACC three-point challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. Score points for your school and after the tournament, the local boys and girls club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. Josh Beadle once again on the attack. Kihei Clark with the great hands. We've seen that from Kihei Clark multiple times throughout this game. Well, Kihei Clark was putting pressure on him and took the pressure away, and Beetle fell down. But Beetle's in the game to try to relieve the pressure off of Chase Hunter so that he can deal with Kihei Clark. Now, Beetle trying to deal with Vanderplas down low. Isn't that much luck there? 
That's number seven on the team. So the good news is Vanderplas got fouled. The bad news is he's going to the free throw line. <laughs> Has struggled from the line, has not been his strong suit, hasn't been the strong suit for this Virginia team as of late. Shooting their lowest free throw percentage since, believe it or not, the national championship team in 2019. So maybe it's a good sign for Virginia that they're not a great free throw shooting team this year. Now, Vanderplas has now missed all four of his free throws. I, I, you know, that's an interesting stat that you have, Corey, but I just I just don't think you can have a lot of success if you can't make free throws in key situations. Much much uh, short, smaller margin of error for this Virginia team than it was for the team in yeah. 2019 as P.J. Hall goes to the hook shot once again is able to finish it off. 17 points on the interior for P.J. Hall as he and Hunter Tyson have answered the bell against this Virginia defense. Franklin hesitated a minute, and that allowed the taller player to cover him up and prevent him shooting the three. Jaden Gardner going to the fadeaway, unable to get it to go. Chase Hunter trying to get Clemson in transition to see if he can find something. Virginia does a great job getting back, but no one close enough to Hunter Tyson as he's able to knock down a three. Brad Brownell wanting to time out, talk it over with his team. Virginia still leads by seven. Virginia possibly than this play right here. The block by Ryan Dunn, and then Dunn runs the court and finishes at the basket. That was Virginia's first basket of the game. They went almost five minutes without scoring. So no moment bigger than that for the Cavaliers, although they're going to be facing some now because Ben Vanderplas is out of the game. Virginia in the one and one and so Tony Bennett is looking to have better free throw shooters But Ryan Dunn's free throw numbers are very little better than Ben Vanderplas Yeah, Ryan Dunn on the floor now and I believe a lot of that was in order to try to slow down Hunter Tyson who has gotten it going here in the second half most likely we'll see Jaden Gardner matched up with PJ Hall on the block with Vanderplas out of the game Thompson doing a really nice job switching out on Franklin, preventing him from getting the three. Reese Beekman unable to knock down the three, even though he got a great look. Hunter Tyson, who leads the ACC in third nationally in defensive rebounds, comes up with the board. And right now, Clemson trying to cut into the seven-point lead. The three here makes it very interesting. Ball's got to go to P.J. Hall, doesn't it? I agree. Hunter Tyson lines up the three, unable to get it yet down. But I agree with you wholeheartedly, Dan. If you're Clemson, you've got to find a way to get P.J. Hall the basketball. Virginia has not been able to defend him this entire now, game. I'm not saying he needs to shoot it, but Virginia's going to bring some pressure, and he has a chance to pass to an open player. Armand Franklin with the three, unable to get it to go down, but there's a lot of contact under the basket. They're going to get in Shefflin for pushing off. Jaden Gardner got great, excuse me, Ryan Dunn, great position on the inside there. Trying to come up with a second chance opportunity. Well, Brad Brownell shaking his head, and I think that that's just the athleticism of Ryan Dunn. I think he surprised Ian Shefflin, and they got tangled up. Well, you mentioned earlier, it's difficult for anyone trying to match up with Ryan Dunn. Virginia from the line tonight, 8 of 13. Dunn steps up, knocks down a big free throw right now. And rarely does it get quiet in this building. But the way things have gone for Tony Bennett and his squad lately during free throws, it is extremely quiet. Dunn finishes off. Both you know, free throws at the line. You want to play at the end of tight games, you go, you show your coach you can make free throws. Chase Hunter trying to feed P.J. Hall on the interior. Armand Franklin was, forgive me, Dunn was right there. Tried to thread the needle with two Virginia defenders in the area. 
How active and effective has Dunn been tonight? In the first moment they put him in the game. And he made an early entrance into the game. Yes. Tony Bennett got Ben, ben Vanderplas out early, got Ryan Dunn in, and he's been effective his entire time on the floor. Four Cavaliers have scored in double figures, and interesting, two of them are Dunn and McNeely. So Tony Bennett getting great play off his bench. We've seen that before this year, but it happened to be in the second game of the season versus Monmouth where both Dunn and McNeely were in double figures in that game. Tyson going to the fall away is going to get the contact in the foul. Ryan Dunn will pick up the foul there trying to defend an attempt from Hunter Tyson. That's one of those plays, Corey, where you get your hand up, but you don't jump. You know, Hunter Tyson has fallen away. If he can make that 17-foot fall away, you know, good for him. He steps back, and you just don't jump. You put your hand up, but you jump, and you slap him on the wrist. And Brevin Galloway back in the game now, and they're... You gotta get you gotta find him. They've got three guards in the game at the moment. And you know Galloway is gonna be looking to shoot the three. And that puts Hunter Tyson at that four spot, of course, where you know he's dangerous and normally a matchup problem for opposing teams as he calmly knocks down two free throws here in front of the Who crew. Not happy because there's no bacon to be won. <laughs> well, of course, the Cavaliers have three guards in the game as well, so they're trying to match up. 17 points now for Tyson. You know, the bacon giveaway, I really like. You know, that's, you know, at, uh, what is it, North Carolina, they give away potato chips and uh, someplace else. They, I guess NC State, they give away uh, fast food chicken. And those, those are certainly important items on the food chain. But I think the highest of the food groups is bacon. Well, so Everyone loves bacon, right? Yeah. So here's Dunn back to the line. Missing on the front end of the one and one for Ryan Dunn there. Virginia 10 of 16 from the free throw line. Chase Hunter still not able to get anything wow. going. Hunter Tyson lining up. That's a tough shot. Give Ryan Dunn a lot of credit defensively defending that. That time he stayed just a little bit away. He jumped, but he kept his hand straight up. He didn't lower. Isaac Neely now checking in for Dunn. Tony Bennett going with his Ball handlers and free throw shooters on the floor now. Four guards. Again, I, I think that you're not really worried about Hunter Tyson beating you shooting twos by posting up. You want to hang on to the ball and you want to make free throws. Near turnover. Great effort by Hunter Tyson, but unable to... Figured out the officials, Doug Sermon, blowing the whistles to see if that will be a shot clock reset or did Hunter Tyson actually possess that basketball? Well, I think Hunter Tyson possessed the basketball, but Virginia did not recover it until it got in the front court. So I think that's what they're looking at. Should the shot clock have reset to 30 or should it have reset to 20? And right at the moment, it's at 16, so the way the... The shot clock operator has it and reset it to 20. So I think that's the issue. Hunter Tyson got the ball, and I thought he possessed it and dribbled it. Well, let's take a look here and see. Hunter Tyson smacks it away. Nope, he never, he never had the ball. Yeah, I believe that shot clock will be lower, never resetting. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Great crew on hand here tonight. Doug Sermons. Ron Gruber, Pat Driscoll. See, Tyson slapped the ball away, but he never possessed the ball, and it went into the backcourt. And so Kihei Clark recovered it, but Virginia never lost possession of the ball, so the shot clock should not have reset, and 16 is the right time. You know, I thought it was reset it to 20 or reset it to 30, but Tyson never possessed yeah. the ball. Great effort once again, but also great effort by Kia Clark, who didn't want another turnover to his credit, so gets over there, comes up with the loose ball.
And Virginia right now not recognizing someone has to shoot, shoot the basketball. The ball. This defense is relentless. Virginia doing a great job getting back on the scramble. Tyson attacking the basket. Finds Chase Hunter in the corner. Knocks down to three. And just like that, it's a four-point game. 33.2 remaining. Tyson finally fouls. Kihei Clark, 26 seconds remaining. That's number 10 on the Tigers. All right, so that's the 10th team foul on Clemson. So he'll get, he'll get two free throws. But again, if you're going to hang on to the ball like this at the end of the game, Corey, you've got to make shots at the end of the shot clock, or you have to make free throws, or both. Then you go back to the last possession. Armand Franklin had a wide-open three-pointer with six seconds remaining on the shot clock. As Kia Clark misses the first free throw. And he didn't take that look. Virginia doesn't get a good look on that last possession, allowing Clemson to get down into transition, get the three. Ye Clark knocks down the second one, a five-point lead right now. If you're Clemson, you don't need the three, right? No, you don't need the three. You'll take it if you can get it, and you certainly don't want to turn it over. Great job defensively once again. Reese Beekman answering the challenge guarding Brevin Galloway. We talked about Brevin Galloway coming into this game, coming off a career-high 28 points, but he has struggled here tonight, Dan. Well, he's trying to force it there. He's got Beekman on him, and he's got Kihei Clark stepping in. You take the ball, you jump stop, and you pass it. That's a force right there, and the Tigers are going to pay for it. And Kihei Clark now making his second straight free throw. Six-point game. This one right here will make it a three-possession game if he's able to get it to go. And now you do need a three. And you need it fast. Kevin Galloway for three, unable to get it. P.J. Hall, the offensive rebound. Wasting time. That's one you've got to kick out. P.J. Hall is able to get it to go, but only 5.1 seconds remaining on the clock. If you don't kick it out, you got to shoot it right away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the dribble around killed a little more precious time than Brad Brownell would have liked to have seen. What, eight straight games? This will be nine, nine. straight games. Okay. Yes. And Virginia has such a great record under Tony Bennett when they can get to 70, and that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Get an opportunity to see our guy, Will Durham. Of course, you normally on your Wednesday nights are hanging out with Wes Durham. We replaced Wes with Will tonight. Well, Wes and I, and usually on our Tuesday nights when we're down in Clemson, we, you know, Will comes to dinner with us and gets his dad to buy him dinner and give him money. I tell you what, that's a pretty good deal. Absolutely it is. Will working hard for Brad Brownell and his team, trying to pick up full court, see if they can come up with a steal here. And if not, we'll have to foul immediately. Dylan Hunter fouling Isaac McNeely. McNeely an opportunity to go to the free throw line and pretty much ice this with 3.6 seconds remaining. Well, McNeely hadn't been in the line much in conference play, but he's 8 out of 10. Well, Tony Bennett absolutely trusts him. He has him in there at this stage of the game and wants him to be the guy going to the free throw line. The first year with an opportunity to make an impression on his coach, as you mentioned before, one way to get more minutes in crunch time is to go and make your free throws when they matter most. Not particularly on a team that doesn't make its free throws. 11 points now for McNeely. Make that 12. Knocking down both free throws and making a seven-point game. Chase Hunter's fling at the end of the game is off the mark. And I want to tell you, Dan Bonner, this has been a blast for me. This has been fun. Hopefully we'll get to do it again soon. Well, it really was a good time.